Hey guys, Stripter here. Today I've got a video for you on how to boost your frame rates in Call of Duty Modern Warfare on PC. The gameplay you're going to get to see in the beginning of the video at least is me using the M4A1 with the incredibly unusual 9mm ammo conversion attachment to it. It's, it's really odd, but it was just so fun I couldn't pass it up. YouTube is capped at 60 FPS, but let's say that I wanted to play this, this gameplay you're seeing here, at 144 hertz live when I record it, because I love high frame rates, and that's not an exaggeration, I really do. But let's say my rig is kind of on the struggle bus and not performing as well as I want for any variety of reasons. Well, today I'm going to help you optimize your frame rates in Modern Warfare, and this video is, of course, sponsored by NVIDIA. They wanted me to do a guide on how to optimize for PC, since it's going to be popular for PC, and to point out that they have a GPU bundle so that if you don't want to listen to me at all and you just want an instant boost to your frame rate, you can purchase a new 20 series GPU, which will obviously increase your frame rate as long as it's an upgrade from the GPU you've already got, and you'll get Modern Warfare for free. So it's a great deal if you want to upgrade, but for now, let's talk about frame rates working with the tools that you do have. Personally, I want a stable frame rate and not just maxing it out. Some gamers, especially PC gamers, love to crank frames and just let it go up to 400, 500, whatever the sky is the limit because they just love it. But personally, I don't enjoy that. I would prefer a constant high number than a maximum number because if that maximum dips, if there's any sort of processing error, if there's any kind of delay, if something goes wrong, it can be really painful if you overdo it. So for PC, your goals are gonna be 60 FPS, if you have a low spec PC and if you have a medium to high spec depending on the settings your optimal frame rates are 120 or 144 FPS that's normal for most gamers 144 is kind of the new 60 FPS the idea here is that you want to cap your frame rate at one of those three depending on what kind of PC you have and then you want to scale your game settings for you constantly always hit that stable frame rate no matter what this will ensure that you don't go overboard and drop frames if something crazy happens and it'll just guarantee you smooth performance which I love. The first thing you're going to want to do is open your options menu on PC and you want to scroll down to where you have your custom frame rate limit. Most of you are probably going to have it on unlimited by default but for the reasons we discussed earlier we're going to move it to custom and you're going to put your frame rate limit at whatever you think your PC can best handle. I've got a really good PC so mine's at 144 and we've got pretty much everything else on maximum and the idea is that we're going to work our way down until we get a stable frame rate. In my case I've got a 2080 Ti so I've got a stable frame rate at 144 but I know that isn't the case for all of you so I'm going to give you my best advice on how to save yourself a little VRAM. I've got a lot extra, but thankfully this game has a nice little visual here to let you know how much VRAM that you are using for this game. The first thing you can do is make sure that your game is in full screen mode. I tend to play full screen borderless because I like to stream and it's really easy for me to tab out to my other monitors to do things with the stream, but the most optimal way to save VRAM and system bandwidth and make your whole computer happy is full screen. Full screen is just the best way to go. So if you're having any frame rate problems at all, let's start off with full screen. The next thing that you can turn down is your render resolution. If you lower your render resolution, in this case, I'm gonna put mine down to 720, it's half resolution, that's what it's gonna render as, and then your game will try to upscale it. I generally like to just have the resolution at 100 because it's whatever my resolution for the game is going to be. And I find that going above the game is just kind of overkill. And you can see as I slide this up, the VRAM just goes way, way up. And I don't really need to downscale it. I don't believe that helps me very much. If anything, you just want to leave this on a 100 and make it whatever your frame rate, not your frame rate, your resolution is. Aspect ratio you don't want to play with. Automatic is fine. I tend to disable VSync. VSync is a fantastic feature and as you can see it can prevent screen tearing and it can sync your, your frame rate with the monitor, but it can cause input delay which drives me crazy even though it's very very minor and the way I optimize my system I always have the frame rate of my monitor so it's not necessary and that saves me some VRAM in and of itself. Nvidia highlights are currently disabled for me for because I'm just recording different stuff, but it doesn't really matter if you leave these on or off, it doesn't eat up your RAM whatsoever. And the color space you can turn up or down, but I just left it on the standard lower one because I can't even see colors. Now we're finally to the point where we can we, we can make a difference. So if you're still running into frame rate problems, one of the first things I would tell you to play with is turn your textures down a little bit. Textures, as you look at my VRAM usage, as soon as I click down, it just drops. Textures 
use up a ton of data in your RAM. They're one of the most demanding things going on in the game, except for maybe the lighting. So turning textures down to, I wouldn't go lower than normal. I kind of think it looks booty on low, but if you have a struggle bus graphics card, you might need to. High is only for good GPUs. Uh, the texture filter, in my opinion, doesn't make much difference. Particle quality, again, doesn't make very much difference. That one might really be more of a CPU kind of thing. Particles tend to make processors very mad. Bullet impacts, I always leave on because they look nice. They have very little impact on your performance. And the tessellation can change your game. I, I, I find it a little bit visually distracting for me, so I only have the tessellation up close. Of course, I could turn it on maximum if I wanted to. The shadow map resolution is something that's very, it makes the game look good to have realistic shadows and such. And it does use a little bit of your RAM because you're constantly rendering all these shadow spots. Instead of on high, if you're on, if you're struggling, I think you could put it on normal and you wouldn't notice a whole lot of difference. If you go down to low, you're going to suffer. Cacheing shadow spots makes a little bit of difference as well. If you, if you can turn this off and it won't really like, hurt you a whole lot, those shadows may pop in on occasion. Particle lighting is another one that tends not to mess up most GPUs. That's more of a CPU intensive process to the best of my knowledge. But now let's take a look at ray tracing. I already did an entire video on RTX in Modern Warfare. I tend to leave mine on because it looks nice. However, the game looks fine without it. If you're struggling for VRAM usage, you can turn it down. Ambient occlusion, I don't notice a whole lot of difference with, and you can see it doesn't affect the VRAM very much, so that doesn't matter. Screen space reflection is something that also doesn't seem to matter very much. I've had, you can turn it down if you need to, but let's go down here a little bit. Uh, there's some post-processing effects. I've got my anti-aliasing locked for some reason. I guess that's because it's uh, some other setting that I have enabled, probably RTX. Depth of field is something you can turn on for when you're aiming down sights. It doesn't really change your VRAM very much or your frame rate, but it is sort of a, it can be visually distracted. Filmic strength doesn't make very much difference. And this is a weird one for Call of Duty. As you can see, there's world motion blur and gun motion blur. They put both of these in the game and turn them on by default for some crazy reason. I think it's because on consoles, they, they can kind of dip to like 50 FPS and you won't notice with the blur. And a lot of PC games these days are adding the blur because it's cinematic and realistic. Personally, I turn both of these off. I am not gonna use one ounce of my GPU to make my game look worse. I will never, ever use these whatsoever. And when it comes to film grain, I really dislike the film grain. I think it's on 25 by default in Call of Duty. And it's the same thing that I will never use one tiny fraction of an ounce of my GPU on something that will make my game look worse. So you can turn that all the way down. So again, the things to keep in mind are full screen is the best display mode, lower textures, lower shadows, shadow caches, and ray tracing are the most important things that you can adjust to improve your frame rate. But of course, everything makes a small difference. If you can get all of those things in balance in a way that you like it and in a way that the game looks good visually, then you'll enjoy yourself and you'll have consistent frames no matter what card you have. I know that several PC enthusiasts are probably tearing into me right now in the comment section telling me that I'm not a real PC gamer if I don't do unlimited FPS and that I'm a monster for using borderless windowed mode because that's so inefficient. But for me, I need these things, especially borderless windowed because I'm streaming and I'm tabbing out of the game all the time to manage other things. And the frame rate cap is because I utterly hate the feeling of dropped frames. It's brutal if you're on a lower spec PC and you're playing at 60 and it dips to 45. But for me, for whatever reason, it's not any better if I'm cranking 240 and then it dips down to 180. That couple of seconds, fraction of a second where it dips is just, it, oh, it hurts so bad and I die so often when that happens because it's always when something big is going on. So I adjust all of my settings and my frame rate and everything for maximum stability so that it will always be perfectly smooth with no dips that's just me. You can crank unlimited if you want to. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And if you didn't learn a single thing but still want higher frame rates, just buy a 20 series GPU and make me look like an awesome sponsor. Drifter out.